Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Mr. Norris Palmer's YouTube channel. Here we see right now that we got um, the dashboard. What is this all about? This is all about quantum computing. As you can see here, this is D-Wave. That's a company which actually is making some kind of quantum computers. And I just got granted access to one of the quantum computers at D-Wave. I got one minute of calculation time and I can run maximum 4,000 experiments. The duration time of that period, which I have access to that quantum computer, is about one month. And then uh, probably it could be renewed. But this is uh, like a trial plan, which I have here. So. Uh, as you can see, the status of the quantum computer is online. The average time to access uh, the quantum computer if I run a quantum experiment is about or between 1 and 10 seconds. And then the access should be granted to run the experiment. I have access to 2038 qubits. Well, if you want to know what qubits are, if you're not familiar with it, with um, the subject of quantum computer and quantum bits, this is like like some kind of processors or uh, each qubit is like its own universe. Uh, and I have access to uh, 2000, 2038 quantum or qubits actually. Uh, the temperature which the processor, uh, the quantum processor is running on is, as you can see, very low. That is actually millikelvin, that is minus degrees. So, at the moment I did not run a quantum experiment uh, for the moment, but I will do that hopefully very soon. The solvers here, supported solvers for to run the, ex, uh, the code on, the quantum code on, uh, uh, are two D-Wave uh, quantum computers. Uh, the D-Wave 2000Q system and the D-Wave 2000Q lower noise system. Well, uh, actually I set it to this because the other one has uh, a little bit less qubits is running uh, a little bit with lower qubits here yeah but i need to test that who is actually uh, in fact then faster uh, here you can or i can get more quantum computer time you know you need to understand one thing this is not a supercomputer i have access to right now at the moment i have access one minute of calculation time on a quantum computer, okay? So the average calculation time or run time, they call it average run time, is 15 to 250 milliseconds, okay? So you can imagine how fast a quantum, quantum computer can or could solve your uh, your program or uh, the code you run it on or the execution or some kind of things you want to test which you now can so for the first time ever may 2019 it's available that uh, at least switzerland uh, I think Europe in general has now access to uh, a D-Wave quantum computer system for some certain amount of time. They can run on their, ex their demos or their experiments. 
their experiment on. So, uh, what is this all about? You know, uh, the best supercomputers on the planet Earth we we live on, we have, you can uh, calculate like, well, let me say, uh, 100 years, okay? A quantum computer could solve uh, that not in 100 years, uh, the result would be in, it depends, uh, some few seconds, maybe, maybe even less, who knows, or some few minutes. So exponentially, extremely faster, especially in terms of solving some, uh, some, uh, some codes or bringing you the result much faster, which I'm going into uh, where sh in a very short uh, time from now. I'm going to run a demo. So, let me just uh, uh, make this clear. This is a dashboard which you can access on Leap. Uh, this is the D-Wave Leap dashboard. The D-Wave Leap, uh, you can sign, sign on, or sign in, sign up, better to say, yeah? sign up, and uh, if it's possible, you could also grant it access to a quantum computer, which is actually in the United States for the moment, uh, directly at D-Wave. Uh, this is like what a quantum uh, computer uh, box, where the quantum computer in, uh, is sitting in, look like. You know, they need to be cooled down to a very low temperature. Let me just click here. And let's see here, you get all about what is LEAP. Uh, LEAP, the real-time quantum ex application environment, is the only cloud-based platform giving application developers real-time uh, real time access to a quantum computer. Uh, of course, at the moment, uh, through Leap, you can use the D-Wave quantum computer, install the open source Ocean SDK, try our demos and interactive examples and join a growing community of quantum developers. Demos and interactive ex examples, yeah, so that's what I uh, hopefully going to do soon. Here is uh, a short demo about it. Let's listen to it. Welcome to Leap, your gateway to the exciting new world of quantum computing. While it's still early in the evolution of quantum computing, this is the perfect time to learn more and experience it firsthand. Behind this portal are resources to help you understand the differences between our quantum computer and everything you already know about classical computers. It's an entirely new way of solving problems, and we hope it will give you a head start in understanding how quantum computers could be applied to your business problems. Most importantly, in less than five minutes after signing up for LEAP, we'll give you real-time access to a D-Wave quantum computer so you can try it for yourself. We've included some demos and online learning tools to make it easy to get started. You can build upon what you learn by creating your own quantum code, running it on a D-Wave system, and immediately get results. By signing up, you will become a part of our quantum community. Just like the world of classical computing required millions of smart people to interact and share knowledge, and to build tools and applications, our goal is to foster a similar environment. You can be part of the coolest community there is. Just a little quantum joke, as our processors run at temperatures 180 times colder than interstellar space. Seriously, our community will connect you to others who are working in this field. We hope you will join them by building your own apps and tools, contributing open source code, and using our forums to educate others on what you learn. Ready to take the leap? Sign up here.
so yeah let's go back here uh, for a moment uh, yeah, yeah. So that, uh, okay so I'm here again and yeah as you can see this is real uh, everything about quantum computer and you have the ability to sign up it depends of course where you live at least in the United States and as I know in Switzerland and in other parts of Europe and it will be extended to other parts other countries of the world in this world okay so we have we got some uh, case studies here Volkswagen is a German car manufacturer he's actually optimizing their travel routes uh, of their taxis in Beijing uh, the travel time of their taxis in Beijing so they are optimizing it uh, with a quantum computer which actually can solve uh, because a solver it's it's very it's very very fast uh, and you can optimize and therefore many different uh, parts of your uh, company's operation so here we go with the NASA I'm see this right now for almost the first time uh, I saw that one but not the other ones so uh, there's another article NASA from NASA quantum assisted supervised machine learning for digital recognition oh, okay analysis or some, something like this Los Alamos National Lab graph partitioning for quantum molecular dynamics simulations okay that's very interesting because this is uh, probably one of the fundamental stuff of how we operate how our body is functioning uh, inside or in general yeah molecular quantum molecular dynamics simulations so simulating how we our genes or, or how our DNA and, and stuff and so on and on and so on is operating about quantum computing in general what is a quant, uh, quantum what is quantum annealing so how it's uh, been solved or how is it uh, working and what is uh, what is the challenge actually yeah there's another documentation that, that's actually a video let's see the video never saw that before listening in six minutes quantum computing seconds. although being a relatively young field is actually quite complex and there's many different approaches being pursued around the world for building a quantum computer at d-wave our approach is quantum annealing and in this video i'll explain what that is and how it relates to the other forms of quantum computing so quantum annealing is basically a way of using the intrinsic effects of quantum physics to help you solve certain types of problems called optimization problems and also a related problem called probabilistic sampling. Now let me explain what these are. So an optimization problem is a problem where you are trying to search for the best configuration out of many many different possible combinations. So an example of this is, say you're trying to build a house, you've got a fixed budget to spend, but there are many, many different things you, you'd like to have in your house. Maybe you can't afford them all. So the challenge is to find out what combination of all of those different things you can afford to fit into your house and maximize your happiness. So you can imagine spending your entire budget on a house which is great or you spend your entire budget and it's not quite so good. So an optimization problem is trying to find the best configuration. Um, the reason you can use physics to solve optimization problems is because you can frame them as a type of problem called an energy minimization problem. And like a fundamental part of physics is that everything's always trying to find its minimum energy state. So things slide down hills or in thermodynamics hot things cool down over time and it's also true of quantum physics. So quantum annealing is um, using quantum physics to find the minimum energy state of something. So sampling problems are related to optimization problems but they're slightly different. Instead of focusing on trying to find the minimum energy state 
what you're trying to do is sample for many low energy states and try and characterize the, the shape of your energy landscape. This is useful for application areas like machine learning, where you're trying to build um, a, a probabilistic representation of the world. And these samples give you information about what your model is like now, and you can use those to improve your models over time. Optimization problems also crop up in, in machine learning. And typically sampling problems and optimization problems are very difficult to solve on, on classical computers. So there's a lot of interest in trying to find alternative techniques to solving these kinds of problems. So that's a description of quantum annealing and the kind of things it's used for. So how does it relate to the other forms of quantum computing? Well, the first form of quantum computing that was developed is called gate model quantum computing. And, um, and the differences between these two kinds are, can be summarized as follows. So in quantum annealing, what you're trying to do is harness the natural evolution of quantum states, although you don't have any control over that evolution. So you set up the problem at the beginning, you let quantum physics do its natural evolution, and the configuration at the end corresponds to the answer you're trying to find. In gate model quantum computing, the aim is a lot more ambitious. What you're trying to do there is be able to control and manipulate the evolution of that quantum state over time. Now, this is a lot more difficult because quantum systems tend to be incredibly delicate to work with. However, you can have, having that amount of control means that you can solve a bigger class of problems. So these differences are the reason why it's been possible to scale up quantum annealing processes to over a thousand qubits now, whereas the state of the art in gate model quantum computing is around 10 qubits. So it's technically a lot more difficult to get the qubits to work together coherently in a gate model quantum computer. However, there have been some very powerful algorithms developed for use when they reach scale. So a couple of examples are Shaw's algorithm for factoring large numbers and also Grover's algorithm for searching through databases. Oh, yeah, I got 2000 These promise to be way, way faster than anything you could possibly run on a classical machine, given our current knowledge. So there have been some other approaches to quantum computing that have been shown to be equivalent to the gate model approach. And these are all known as universal quantum computers. So to be classified as a universal quantum computer, it needs to be shown that there's a mapping of the specialized gate model algorithms to these other forms, that it doesn't take up too much time. So there's a polynomial time mapping and a polynomial resource mapping from the gate model approach to these other approaches. So quantum annealing isn't a universal quantum computer. However, it is related to one of the forms of universal quantum computers, a form called adiabatic quantum computing. In fact, adiabatic quantum computing is a specific form of quantum annealing, which also works on the process of energy minimization. So it's just to say that quantum annealing and universal quantum computers aren't completely separate entities. There is a, a, um, a link between them. So, there I've described quantum annealing and the kind of things it's used for. In my next video, I'm going to explain um, how quantum annealing works. So now we know a little bit more about quantum annealing. Uh, I'll see in here. But uh, yeah, we will go further. We can go to other videos here, but I'm going back. So... Let's go back, let's continue here. Documentation, getting started with the D-Wave system. I think that would be a good documentation to start with if you want to know um, all about the D-Wave system. Then there's a video about D-Wave lab tour, the infrastructure of the D-Wave quantum computer. I think this is very interesting for you to see if you're interested in quantum computing. So let's take a tour of the quantum, of the D-Wave quantum computer. And ladies and gentlemen, please look very carefully. This is how a quant, so-called quantum computer in today's time look like. Uh, yeah, let's just have a look for the moment, okay? 
Here we go. Enjoy. Five minutes, 11 seconds. Here we go. I'm Jeremy Hilton. I'm the Vice President of Processor Development at D-Wave Systems. I'm responsible for the Processor Development Group, which involves the design, test, and development and release of the quantum processor that D-Wave makes, which is the underpinning of the quantum computers that we build. Each of these black systems is a quantum computer. Inside that system is a thumbnail-sized quantum processor. In order to operate and develop quantum processors, we require a fairly extreme operating environment, which includes ultra-low temperatures and an ultra-low magnetic environment. And to achieve those, we need a fairly large and sophisticated system. The main room behind us houses the quantum processor and the data racks in the front hold the quantum server where users can access and program the quantum processor. And the other data racks include the cooling system, which includes pumps and, uh, and is responsible for the chirping sound you can hear in the background. Inside the room, be before we get to the quantum processor, there are many layers of shielding which allow us to create the low noise magnetic environment the chip sits in. If you look inside the data racks, you'll see that they don't contain what you would normally expect. So here we have uh, some scroll pumps, which are mechanical parts associated with pulling vacuum on the fridge inside the room behind. So this is obviously highly unusual for, uh, for a data rack, but has been integrated so that it, it wouldn't look out of place in a, in a data center. And in fact, the, uh, the requirements for running the system are consistent with all the services that would be available in a data center, which would include chilled water and power predominantly. In, in this rack is the quantum server, which allows users from uh, anywhere in the world to interact with the processor itself. This server is receiving information from users, converting that into the machine language of the processor, and sending that machine language into the room behind where High precision analog yeah, I, electronics will convert those signals into electrical pulses, which are sent through cables into the refrigerator and down through the cooling system to the, uh, the ultra low temperature of the processor. It yeah, executes this problem and then, and then data from the processor is returned to the server and returned to the user. And the system is very flexible and that users can be programming in whatever language they're comfortable with and uh, in interacting with it either uh, with this system in their data center or, or even here in D-Wave's lab. Very interesting. That's the amazing. quantum bits in our processor store information in the form of little magnetic fields. The zero and one correspond to a little magnetic spin. The controls over the qubits are all in the form of magnetic fields. So the quantum processor is very sensitive to magnetic noise and the magnetic environment that it sits in. In order to keep that magnetic environment really low, as well as support the ultra-low temperature that it's operating at, this system behind me has about 16 layers of shielding between where I'm standing and where the chip sits at the center. These, these black panels are really for aesthetic purposes, and they contain, they integrate these data racks with a shielded room, which is the first of those layers of shielding, and is filtering out RF signals. So if you were to stand inside the room and close the door, your cell phone would stop receiving a signal. The fridge itself has a combination of radiation shields as well as magnetic shields, which help support the ultra-low temperature operating environment and achieve the ultra-low magnetic field. Inside the room, we have to keep electromagnetic noise very low. So even things like power outlets aren't allowed because power can be quite noisy without extensive filtering. So inside the room, we have the cooling system, and these are radiation shields. So this is the next layer of shielding inside the room. The chip itself, the quantum processor, is sitting at the bottom of this array of shields. And uh, this is, again, the first of several more layers. Inside these shields is vacuum, which is the insulation of the cooling system. When we want to uh, swap the processor or conduct maintenance on the fridge, we warm the system up, we remove these shields, and then the processor is accessible as well as all of the internals of the refrigerator.
<laughs> Inside. Okay, let's go to that part. That's the next part here. Three minutes, 27 seconds. My name is Murray Tom. I'm the director of professional services at D-Wave. I talk with our customers and partners about what quantum computers are, what kind of problems that they solve, and work with them to develop software that uses quantum computers. We're standing inside a quantum computer. And you may know that the quantum world is delicate. It's easily disturbed. So there are many layers of shielding in this system, which we've removed in order to look at the internals here. A traditional supercomputer may have many thousands of processors in it. But in this quantum computer, there's only one chip located right down here. When you send an instruction to the quantum computer, a delicate quantum calculation is taking place on that chip to produce your solutions. The system we're looking at here is an ultra-low temperature cryogenic fridge. Because it works at such low temperature, we use the Kelvin scale to measure how cold it's getting. In the Kelvin scale, a warm room is like 300 Kelvin, and zero Kelvin is the lowest temperature that can be reached. Physicists refer to it as absolute zero. There's two levels of cooling in this system. The top one is a pulse tube refrigerator, which takes us from 300 Kelvin to 50 Kelvin, and then down to 3 Kelvin. This is roughly the temperature of interstellar space. And then a second refrigerator, a dilution refrigerator, takes us in this plate from 0.7 Kelvin, 0.1 Kelvin, and then down to 0.01 Kelvin. When the system is operating, this plate and everything mounted below it is 10 thousandths of a degree above absolute zero, which is more than 100 times colder than interstellar space mounted here. And this whole system is designed to sustain those low temperatures in a continuous cycle. When you send an instruction to a quantum computer, the signals pass down these wires along the sides of the refrigerator. And at this point, there's a break in the wires where all the signals become superconducting. Superconductivity is this amazing effect where you can send electrical signals without any resistance whatsoever. So the electrons aren't even interacting with the atoms in the wires around them. That's great because it means that this portion of the system has no energy dissipation, it produces no heat. But it also means that we can't rely on the wires to cool the electrical signals and eliminate their noise. So we have a custom filter bank mounted here which cool those, cools those electrons. An important aspect of the superconductivity is that these signals and the quantum processor unit consume virtually no power, whereas the supporting systems around it consume about 15 and a half kilowatts. And this remains the same regardless of which processors are installed at the bottom. If you were to take a fully populated server rack out of a traditional supercomputer, it might consume 10 times that much power. So for our first customer, Lockheed Martin, when they upgraded from their first chip to the D-Wave 2, they saw a relative performance improvement on the order of 10,000 times, but the power consumption for the system was the same. So, yeah, as we just saw, that uh, that's a part of the tour. Uh, you saw the introduction um, by going to how the signal or how the the users can access a quantum computer, going into the system, actually t uh, turning it into a, a quantum. Uh, readable or a quantum chip readable language uh, with signals and all that kind of stuff and the result uh, cal the calculation and then it will be returned and translated again into uh, our yeah our program language that will uh, then show the result in uh, in a way that we can understand so it's uh, highly complicated, but the black box contained all the necessary uh, components, including the quantum chip itself. And uh, yeah, I got access, granted access to the quantum computer, uh, a device quantum computer for at least one minute this month. 
let's see uh, may later on but at the moment one minute think about it uh, when the average calculation time is between 15 and 250 milliseconds uh? so can you imagine how many experiments you can run uh, on a quantum computer chip uh, from D-Wave actually when I used the one with 2038 qubits maybe I used the other one uh, to test that also so but this is uh, very interesting and it's a complete new era and I truly believe uh, also from what I've seen so far and what uh, I've heard that quantum computer and AI uh, at least those two things will change uh, our understanding of the world we see it today so let's see it will be huge it will be extreme that's what I what I can tell you right here so let's go further uh, customs using DWF systems quantum computing at USC Lockheed Martin quantum computing lab QCC and that's a video actually that would be also very interesting to see how Lockheed Martin is using a quantum computer cal calculation uh, to advance their technology actually uh, Lockheed Martin is worldwide known for uh, also aircraft and component especially aircraft manufacturer so Google interesting yeah <clears throat> Google and NASA quantum artificial intelligence lab that would be also interesting to know because we're using Google actually the Google search engine almost every day yeah there is a UC uh, Center of quantum information science actually that's the quantum computer ship sitting right there uh, the information is coming in translated signals processed signals back translated and readable in our language with zeros and ones at the moment uh, published research also interesting to know if you want to learn more about quantum computing fast transitions in a programmable quantum spin glass simulator oh my gosh oh observation research publication uh, observation of topological phenomena in a programmable lattice of 1800 qubits well well ladies and gentlemen as you know as you could see i have access now to a quantum computer device with 2038 qubits and I know by now in 2000 and 2019 May I know they already have a quantum computer with 5000 plus quantum uh, or qubits okay so it's getting much higher and uh, the goal to reach is uh, uh, a million qubits so that is like that that is like a million parallel universes you can they are attached and uh, are accessible to use it that's that's it that's nice that's interesting huh? so next one here is a research publication entanglement in a quantum annealing processor how it's related to so interesting huh well I would like to see both of them here so let's start with that one for a moment seven minutes, seven seconds. this machine Wait, is this like minute. a giant instrument a new telescope to an astronomer instead of using it to search for new cosmological discoveries we're using it to explore the relationship between mathematics and physics it's a very multidisciplinary science. We have physicists, which are probably the most common people who work on quantum computing, but we also have somebody who's in applied mathematics. If you look at reality one way, you see physics, you look at it the other way, you see mathematics, and it's actually both. We're in that same kind of moment in time where 
we're you know looking at you know the first or second transistor here. There's a revolution taking place, um, and it's kind of exciting to watch it play out. It represents a way that humans can expand the knowledge that they have and the problems that they're able to solve. It's a game changer for the corporation, it's a game changer for the, our customers, and ultimately it's a game changer for humanity. Computationally, this is the equivalent of the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk. Quantum information science, quantum computing is certainly has the potential to be a turning point in history. This machine is the first practical step that will essentially reset us on Moore's curve. Moore's law is an observation that the number of transistors on a chip doubles over a certain time period or the cost of the transistors halves. But we now know today that there is a limit to how small you can shrink things, how many transistors you can cram onto a single chip. So that's gonna bound human capability for uh, tackling you know, certain problems. This machine offers an alternative. And uh, this might be considered the rebirth maybe of uh, analog computing for solving certain kinds of problems. Optimization is uh, searching for the best possible answer among a large set of answers. These are the kinds of problems that cannot be solved by uh, calculations with classical digital uh, computers. For example, it would take many times the age of the universe to try to identify the folded state of a protein. And yet nature uh, can do this in, in seconds or maybe minutes. Uh, it's had billions of years to think about it. We're trying to solve similar kinds of optimization problems. It uh, mimics nature to find the minimum or the maximum of, of a design space. So if we can simulate 20 years of evolution in 10 nanoseconds, then we could evolve our engineering systems to be much more successful uh, than what they are now, and it would cost very little. If we actually uh, tried to do that in reality, the cost would be horrendous, and the amount of time it would take would be intolerable. The most important thing to remember about ordinary computers is that they work with bits, which can be either zero or one. In quantum computing, the fundamental unit of information is not a classical bit of zero or one, rather it's a qubit, a quantum bit, which can be in a superposition. A superposition means that the system is in some mixture of the one state and the zero state. And as a result of that, when you have a string of these quantum bits, you get a multitude of possibilities. So if you have two quantum bits, you have four possibilities, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Those all coexist. And a quantum computer can parallel process all these possibilities. The idea of a quantum computer is that you build it based on quantum physics, the physics of the very small, rather than classical physics, which is the physics of the large world we see around us. When you get down to smaller scales, Things become probabilistic. Things interact with different physical effects than the ones we can see on a large scale, or those physical effects manifest themselves in different ways. Quantum computers exploit these probabilistic phenomena in a way that makes a new kind of problem solving possible. Let's say you're, you're climbing mountains, and you're looking for the deepest valley in this mountainous landscape. Probably what you will do is begin to walk downhill, and you will continue to walk downhill until you start to walk back uphill. You'll say, ah, I went through the minimum, and you'll turn back around until you find that one point where you're not moving up or down, but you're just stationary. And you can think of ground state as being that lowest possible energy state. In quantum mechanics, we're allowed to perform something called tunneling. We can literally go through walls. With this particular machine, it's, it's based on a, a simulation of this thermodynamic process that includes quantum mechanical effects that allows it to continue to explore the space around that valley uh, without actually climbing up and over or, and being restarted, but to essentially tunnel through the mountain and find out if there is a, actually a lower valley on the other side. And it will continue to do that until it reaches the ultimate lowest valley. 
it's always an interesting one to explain to a lay person because it's one of the really weird things that happens with quantum mechanics. And the fact that you have weird things happening in quantum mechanics is because you, you can exploit these effects that you don't have in your toolbox when you have a classical computer. There are a lot of problems that are provably very hard, um, NP-complete or NP-hard um, in the jargon. And you want to use the, the shortest path possible, or you, or you want to route things in a way so that they all arrive simultaneously. So you're looking for an optimization in terms of time management or resource allocation or minimizing path lengths. Of course, people have been trying to solve them with clever heuristics for half a century. Using a quantum computer, we would hope to be able to develop algorithms that allow some improvement in the calculations of these problems. It allows us to consider problems that prior to the day have been beyond the scope of anything that we thought was possible. Uh, problems of energy, healthcare, transportation. The list of problems that we're all familiar with, those can all be eventually solved. The idea of having you know, hardware that can essentially drive to the, straight to the solution, um, perhaps better than our clever heuristics, is really attractive. It's our mandate, it's a moral, ethical requirement that we look at applying those capabilities to where they will do the most good in the future. Ah, interesting, 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 yep. Okay, let's go to the next one here for a moment, to the, the Google and NASA Quantum Artificial Intelligent Lab. Listen. Who was it that said, if you think you understand quantum physics, you don't understand quantum physics? Consciousness, intelligence, free will, determinism, black holes, protecting the planet from asteroids, Heisenberg concept and principle, atoms, ion traps, nuclear magnetic resonance, superconductors, photons, artificial intelligence, machine learning, past and future, classical physics, time travel. I mean, the whole thing. I can tell it's going to get very hot as I start speaking, so tell me if I start to look really shiny. Quantum physics puts everything into question. It defies every intuition you have about the natural world. Quantum is a very strange regime of physics. Things can exist in this state of superposition where they can be like ghosting on each other, where they could be this and that at the same time. Entanglement. Quantum entanglement. Two objects, if they're quantum mechanically entangled, are still strongly related to each other, even though they can be a vast distance apart. There's the notion of the multiverse. There's a whole family of hardwoods in different states and then going through different experiences and different life trajectories. The famous one is quantum tunneling. 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 Tunneling is the slippage between universes. For a long time, people thought those effects only existed in the microscopic domain. Like uh, atoms, electrons, photons. But really, it's the theory of our universe. So if you want to build a quantum computer, you want to incorporate those new phenomenon into information processing. Maybe quantum computation is one of those instruments that's going to allow us to see quantum effects at the human scale. Google and NASA have teamed up to share one of the world's first commercial quantum computers. This machine, made by Canada's D-Wave, will be installed in a NASA research center in California. This is the inside of one of our dilution refrigerators. All of this infrastructure is to basically operate the chip at a temperature that's two orders of magnitude colder than interstellar space. The, the processor is a quantum computer. It uses things called qubits, as well as being either one or a zero. A qubit can also be both at the same time, therefore bringing about a quantum leap in terms of power. Harnessing principles of reality that are, up until very recently, completely not observable by us. 
is just fascinating in ways that I can't completely articulate. The overwhelmingly obvious killer app for quantum computation is optimization. Optimization problems are, are extremely difficult problems. Actually, all Google server centers together will not be capable of coming up with the best solution to these optimization problems as they get larger. So now, what is an optimization problem? Here, I'll give you an example. You want to do a trip through South America, and you want to visit a number of cities. And then you ask, what is the cheapest ticket I can get to visit, let's say, 20 um, cities? And you can, of course, different routes and, and different uh, airlines. And sort of imagine I list all the different options I have for my different routes to travel to these cities. We currently, as a civilization, we generate vast amounts of data. It could be climate data, genomic data, Data, but it's very difficult to generate useful insights off times from that data. If you can solve optimization problems better, you have an important resource at your hand. I think at least it teaches us that we shouldn't be naive about our world, that we shouldn't think about the world as a simple machine. It forces us to consider, you know, more sophisticated notions of how the reality around us is actually shaped. I can't ask it how long I'll live or the meaning of life. Really, we don't know what the best questions are to ask that computer. That's exactly what we're trying to understand now. To me, the most important question is, are we alone? And I have a feeling that quantum computers, as they mature, are going to help us answer that question. This is, of course, a more long-term research endeavor, and there are still tremendous um, obstacles and, and big questions. Some of those will be addressed in D-Wave. Some will be addressed at NASA, and some at Google. I wasn't sure I would be able to experiment with a quantum computational device in my lifetime, and now I'm confident that I will be able to. How amazing it is that we, with our monkey heritage and monkey brains and monkey fingers, have somehow lucked into a brain that allows us to ask legitimate questions about the nature of physical reality. That's so cool. It's that human risk to go forth into that unknown frontier, whether it's space exploration or quantum exploration. We do it because we must. We do it because that's what it means to be human. Yeah, because that means to be human, right? So, let's see. Welcome back. We could go forward here. How about that documentation here? Oh. oh, we'll download that later. Technical description. Uh -huh. What we do, introducing, that's a quantum computer right here. That's the D-Wave quantum computer chip. It's like a processor, quantum processor, quantum chip. Uh, that is how it works, client library. So this is my website I'm accessing through uh, uh, my internet, the solar will interpret it, put it in, signal counter, calculate it, and then getting back, translate it, and give me the feedback or the result. Interesting. So, see, leap connected, dark accessing, that's how it works. God, leap, yeah, you can uh, uh, sign up here too. So, let's go back here. And, uh, yeah. Let's 
so let's see that for a moment here PDF documents downloading here it's a little bit slow here on that website come on move come on move my gosh that takes ages here uh, you see my gosh all the kind of calculates go through here like this for a second a little bit faster Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. Uh-huh. Yep. Calculating proteins here. Protein structure. Clustering for identifying communities in biosystems. Biosystems. Hmm. Yo. Thank you. Okay. We saw that. Let's go back. Yo. Voila. So. Demo. Okay. How that works. In this demo, we will compare fact factoring on a classical computer with a novel quantum approach. Learn about the power of solving constraint satisfaction problems on a DWF system and solve a problem on a quantum computer. Uh, this is what I'm aiming aiming for here. Oh, come on. Here we go. Uh, ah, here we go. Yep. Okay. Factoring by running a multiplication circuit in reverse. In reverse. Hmm. Integral factoring is the process of finding factors that, when multiplied together, give a target integer. integer. Uh, for example, the factors of 15 are 3 and 5, because 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, in reverse, starting with the result and giving the way, giving the way, come on here, yep, here we go. Because factoring large numbers can be extremely time consuming, it is the basis of RSA, the most widely used public cryptographic system. Mm -hmm. D-Wave quantum computers computers factor numbers in an entirely different way turning a multiplication circuit into a constraint satisfaction problem allows the quantum computer to compute inputs to compute inputs from a fixed output hmm? so the output is given that is like the 15 that's the result the result is given that's the output and in reverse give you uh, the inputs the inputs and the inputs would be 3 to 5 or not 3 to 5 excuse me 3 times 5 which is then 15 so I give you a result and it will factorize it and give me the way. Interesting. So I have, if I know the result, it shows me the way too. All right. Here you could learn more about it. Let's continue here. Okay. I choose that already before. Factoring. Choose a number to factor. The number you choose will be submitted as a constraint satisfaction problem for the D-Wave quantum computer to solve. This demo uses small numbers for which finding factors is simple. However, the same technique applies to solving complex constraint satisfaction problems. So I choose, oh, why not the biggest one, huh? Should, it should calculate, uh, yeah, 
I want to see the power of this system. Okay, continue. Okay, oh, here, factoring, not working, still on. Again, not working. Seven, oh, match. Seven times seven is 49. Awesome. Or 49 divided 7 is 7. So the result is 7, 7. 7 times 7 is 49. I give it the result like before, 49. And it will show me the way, the factorization. It's called factorization. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Okay, how classical computers factor? Classical computers are inefficient at factoring large, uh, very large numbers. For small numbers, a basic approach like trial division show on the right, ta-da, <laughs> in which we methodically try dividing our number, that was 49, by candidate factors. Candidates are five, six, seven, bingo, ah, yeah, uh, one after another, which you just saw before until it finds the number seven because seven times seven is 49 and that's the result seven times seven as the numbers grow one two three four five six seven seven as the numbers uh, as the numbers grow however this sequence of simple operations quickly become extremely time consuming one, two, three, <laughs> you know, so factoring and encryption. In 2009, that is 10 years ago, or was 10 years ago, yeah? 512-bit uh, factoring was estimated to take month, my gosh, month, ooh, 768-bit factoring over a thousand years. Uh, and 2024, uh, uh, 1024-bit factoring a million years, a million years, at, in two, 10 years, just 10, 10 years ago, a single core compute time, okay, Klein Chang, what is this here, the factoring uh, of a 768-bit RSA, as we re wrote before, like the crypto stuff there, Modules, PDF, uh, International Association of Cryptologic Research. You can read it here if you want to get more. So let's continue. Um, a next multiplication using a uh, Boolean logic circuit. Yep, let's try that. So where is the way to go and that was the way here to find that 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 777 going back finding different integers that was not that was uneven 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 and even 77 seven. i mean even not in terms of the number but in terms of uh, uh that it will uh, match the result for seven times seven or seven times seven is 49, yep, 3-bit multiplication circuit to find the product of two factors, 1, 2, 3, yep, okay, factoring multiplication using a Boolean, 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 logic circuit. While factoring can be difficult classically, it is easy to check the results. Here is a simple multiplication circuit that we can use to see whether two factors are valid. The factors are import on the left on the left there and their binary value flow through the gates in the circuit yeah and then 
uh, circuit yielding the product on the right. Drrr, drrr, 49. By transferring the multiplication circuit into a constraint satisfaction problem, we can compute a set of input values from a known output value. Okay, we know for a known output value, which is 49, we can then in reverse going back, uh, compute a set of input values. And this is 7 times 7 is ta -da, 49. Awesome. More information about that can be read, read, read here. So next is multiplication of the constraint satisfaction problem. Let's go to that one. Da, 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 da. Multiplication as a constraint satisfaction problem. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time I read this, okay? So I will read it uh, for you. A multiplication circuit is a complex, an example, I mean, an example of a more general Boolean logic circuit formed with interconnected Boolean logic gates. These are some kind of gates, okay? And half other, half other, half, sure, half other, and full added gates. So I guess that's a full one and that's a half one. Yeah, shown in color on the right. This is colored and this is colored. Colored, 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 yeah, colored, colored, colored. colored. So, colored where we were, colored on the right. Right. Um, specify constraints on the input and output. Input was here and the output was here. So, Formulating the problem from a constraint satisfaction perspective eliminates direct directionally from the relationships. Relationships, seven times seven is 49. Uh, 49 divides seven is seven. And that seven times seven is 49 again. Uh, making it possible to run the circuit in reverse. In reverse. Because 9 divides 7 is 7. 9 divides 7 is 7. 7 times 7 is 49. Awesome. Uh, notably, the programming technique used in this demo can be applied to a Boolean logic and a board class of constraint satisfaction problems. Okay, next one is programming the quantum computer. Ladies and gentlemen, programming. Here we go. Okay, let's see. Input half sec and gate. Tack, tack, tack. Okay, what is this exactly? That's the classical computer. It works like this. It's like uh, ones and zero is see or something like this. Quantum computer is like either this way, this way, this way, or that way. To get to the result because if you know the result you know the and uh, the way and here you always need to go forth back and forth you can go here in any direction yeah interesting that is not a round huh uh, a circle I mean. <laughs> okay <coughs> excuse me programming the quantum computer uh, constraint satisfaction problem can be programmed into a quantum computer one logic gate at a time. This is the normal way. One way at a time. Yeah. Shown there and shown here an end gate is a constraint between two binary inputs and one output. Two binary inputs, one output. Two binary inputs, 
one output. So we go forward. It outputs one only when both binary inputs are one. <laughs> yeah. One one. Yeah, logically. Is it in some way? Binary constraints can be mapped to a set of qubits, q quantum bits and coupled connectors so that those qubits associated with the constraint input and output will with high probability find value consistent with the constraint awesome if you understand that for the uh, let's continue for the end gate that is this one a qubit associated with the output seeks a value or, or, uh, of 1 if and only if the qubit associated with the input are all, are all setting, setting to a value of 1, otherwise it seeks a value of 0. Okay. The quantum computer simultaneously seeks input and output value that satisfies all the constraints of the logic circuit simultaneously seeks input and output value. So it goes this direction and this direction or as from the result this direct well let me say this direction and this direction to get both of the results which is or which was the input or the way interesting yeah awesome okay next one is creating a map interesting let's go to that one a map. Okay, before we press here something, let's read it. Creating the mapping. Applying transformations across all gates. In the circuit creates the mapping to qubits and couplers. Okay. In the network of qubits shown on the right, right here, or here, yeah, right side, um, the full others, these are those, the full others, from our original circuit transform to yellow pentagrams pentagrams here 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 okay pentagrams and the half others to the blue squares the half others huh. half others half others these are the half others oh oh Okay, not that one, the half others. So, hmm. yeah, half others to the blue squares and the end gates to prink triangles, prink triangles, pink triangles. Where are the triangles? Uh huh. Circuit transformation. Uh huh. That are the triangles here. Uh huh. And now it's transformation into qubits. Okay. Now we have a qubit 
circuit board or qubit board all connected in some way to each other and some way through others oh my gosh look at this the circuit board looked like oh come on yeah looked like this then the transformation into the quantum code or quantum language or something <laughs> yeah quantum code and then it looks like this my gosh that's like an optimization here or finding the solution uh, from here to here okay uh, while it's possible to create the wires in the quantum computer I uh, read this a uh, click transformation see here it was click transformation ding yeah, and that's a transformation to the right to see the mapping okay while it is possible to create wires in the quantum computer matching matching uh, the interconnection in the circuit the problem mapping is more efficient if the number and the length of wires is minimized of course as short as possible to the solution yeah and as short and as fast as possible to the solution yeah i like that as fast as possible as fast as short and as fast as fast as and sh as short <laughs> no as short and as fast as possible to the solution i like that idea yeah uh, it's getting better it's getting better it's getting better it's getting better okay it's getting better, getting better. yeah i'll set of let's continue this here um <laughs> A set of interconnected inputs interconnected inputs interconnected. puts and outputs and outputs interconnected inputs and outputs is reduced to a single qubit rather than distributing the information across several wires click qubits To the right, to the right, here, to see the final transformation. See, step by step, it's everything is this is described. You know, you can you just read step by step, going through here, click there, then do this. That's how it works. Here we go, and now you see. Okay, next one is run it on your. Co quantum computer oh, I, I, uh, ladies and gentlemen run it on your quantum computer yeah that's what i want oh my gosh run no no before i press that put the cursor away here let's read it run it on our quantum computer the binary value on the output of the multiplication logic circuit can be fixed to the number we want to factor the binary value this is this is the 49 one zero 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 one one hmm okay on the quant on the output of the multiplication <laughs> okay this is the output Of the multiplication of the multiplication that would be seven seven because seven seven times seven is 49. 49 okay the quantum computer returns the value of the remaining variables 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 including the factors we seek and this is the factor 49 uh, when we formulate a problem in this way in this way we are specifying the relationships amongst variables variables okay this approach can be used to represent any ball and logic circuit and find solutions 
to a large set of constraint satisfaction problems. Solve the problem using the D-Wave quantum computer. Are you ready? Oh, I, I used the quantum computer for the first time. Congratulations. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I accessed the quantum computer for the first time. What time is it? It's Saturday, 18th of May, 2019, time 3.09 a.m. My gosh. 3.09 a.m. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I really use the quantum computer here. For the first time ever, I accessed a quantum computer. <laughs> and it took how long? Runtime 0 0.025 seconds. That would be, this is one, uh, 2500 of a, of a second. One millisecond, a tenth, a hundred, twenty-five tenths of a second. Wow, that's awesome. And what is this one? Unique solution. One of samples 50. Okay, let's read it. Congratulations. You just factored the number by solving a constraint satisfaction problem on the DWF quantum computer. You! <laughs> awesome. Check out the Ocean software package where you will find the constraint compiler that allows you to specify a logical circuit for the compiler to map onto the quantum computer. Because, solution, because solutions are pro, probabla, probabilistic, we typically ask for multiple samples whenever we run a problem. Many samples can be returned without significant, significantly affecting the overall runtime. Of course, as more you can do at the same time, as many the time is the same or even much faster, who knows? Oh my God, what, what is this one? Probab Ballistic solution may include some individual answers. See more information. Okay. Oh, that means I need to click here. What is when I click here, what happened? Okay. Probabilistic solutions. When the DWF quantum computer solves a problem, it uses quantum Phenomena such as superposition and tunneling to explore all possible solutions simultaneously. Yeah? Simultaneously, ladies and gentlemen, at the same time, and find a set of the best. Ones. <laughs> at the end of the computation, a single solution is sampled from a set of good solutions. With some probability. And return to you as the, the answer to your problem. Problem, answer. Because the sample solution is probabilistic, different solutions may be returned in different rounds. Oh, yeah. In most cases, when we send a problem to the system, we ask for many samples. Not just one, not just one. Hmm. This way, we not only see multiple best answers, 
but also reduce the probability of setting on a suboptimal answer. We want the best answer, not just a suboptimal. I want the ultimate answer. When factoring 12, for example, example uh, and asking for 50 examples in our answer, we may see results like this. Yeah. And what is the best result? Hmm. Okay. Recap. Recap. My gosh, I run the first experiment on the quantum computer. Look at this. 50 samples, 0 0.025 seconds. Hmm. I thought it would be 0 0.000000 something. Yeah, let's see. Maybe when we have a, a million qubit or so. <laughs> Recap, okay. Uh, now we've seen how quantum computers can enable a new approach to solve uh, solving a broad class of problems. We showed how to transform a multiplication circuit into a network of variables and the relationship between them. Because a problem expressed in this way has no directionality we can see that the outputs to find the inputs as we did in this demo demo set the inputs to find the outputs or anything in between constraint satisfaction problems that can be solved on the deep uh, quantum computer are everywhere Scheduling, combinatorial circuit, fail diagnostics, portfolio optimization, that's like finance, traffic routing, that is what's like uh, Volkswagen is now using, as we just saw before. I showed you just, or oh, I read, uh, read it to you. Uh, traffic routing, that is good when you use it for optimizing traffic routes uh, in transportation. And more, and much more, I guess. What is, okay, wow, my gosh. Research findings. A hybrid quantum classical approach to solving shadowing problems. You know, oh my gosh. Exploration of quantum classical approaches to scheduling a Mars lander activity problem. Quantum annealing implementation of chop shop scheduling. Chop shop scheduling. Uh. Traffic flow optimization using a quantum annealer. I like that one actually. Mapping constraint. I will come back to that one right after. Mapping constraint optimization problems to quantum annealing with application to fault diagnosis oh that's also that is very needed here optimizing problems to quantum annealing with application to fail diagnostics we need that absolutely necessary but before we need to test it and test it or test it with this one to find if and then correct it that it will never happen again. Okay, next, 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 next here. Just for a moment to see that one, huh? Okay. A quantum approach to diagnosis of multiple faults in electrical power systems. Oh, we need that one for probably, we need that one for the next, uh, electrical power uh, operated motors like electrical cars electrical uh, flying cars and so on and so on and so on huh a quantum approach to diagnosis of multiple faults in electrical power system we don't need uh, faults in electrical power system it needs to function perfectly you know 
<coughs> you know, and uh, on the, yeah, yeah. On the reading readiness of quantum optimization machines for industrial applications also go, uh, necessary. Uh, solving the optimal trading trajectory problem using a quantum annealer. Optimal trading trajectory. Okay, also needed that we find the best uh, and probably cheapest routes and, and probably fa cheapest uh, fastest, cheapest, and best routes. You know. Okay, next. Quantum annealing for prime factoring. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Prime factoring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I did prime factoring. I did uh, prime numbers. I, find, I found prime numbers uh, some time ago by running, uh, running it uh, through Boink. And through uh, other programs, I found many prime numbers back in time. So let's continue. Prime factoring using quantum annealing and computational algebra was algebraic geometry. Okay, prime factoring using quantum annealing and computational. Algebraic geometry, algebraic. Prime factoring using quantum annealing and computational algebraic geometry. Okay. All right, interesting. Hmm. We'll find some, some new ways. We need this probably for satellites. Okay, next, boosting integer uh, and, and also connections. Okay, and many other things. Okay, good. Next, yeah. boosting integer factoring performance via quantum annealing uh, offsets. Okay, as I said, I will go back to that one mapping of strains of the annealing with application to faulty where was it traffic oh, this one traffic flow optimization using a quantum annealer okay using quantum annealer introduction that would be the code the quantum code the functional form of the you wrote that the qpu is designed to optimize Okay. Give the matrix Q. My gosh, you need to uh, you need to really study quantum uh, computing, quantum physics, and stuff like that to understand this kind of mathematics. If you understand this, and if you listen to this, go for it. I'm telling you, you change the world. Do it now. You will change the world. Right, do test. Now you have the first time the ability, the, 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 the possibility to access and run your quantum code, your own quantum code on a real quantum computer. It's called D wave quantum or D wave leap. D wave leap. Uh, go to the D wave system, sign up for the leap if it's possible in your country or wherever you are. If it's possible, yeah, just to say where you are. If it's possible that you can sign up, sign up. And if you're, a, uh, if you can write quantum code, write quantum codes as much as you can and, l and run it and test it and build your own quantum application and calibrate with other, uh, very interesting people who are actually doing quantum uh, programming, okay? I encourage you to do that because this is the future. The future which changed the world as we see it today. And probably, uh, yeah, I'm sure that will, will, uh, we will discover much things which we've never even thought exist. Yeah? I encourage you. 
and I I advise you huh? if I ever can advise you I advise you to do that write your quantum codes if you are in this field and run it on a div quantum computer you have the ability to access a real quantum computer for free uh, f at least one minute uh, running some experiment if you need more time you can even sign up there are different uh, uh, like subscription plans uh, like for students or like for the even the government uh, or, or for commercial applications and so on collaborate collaborate and develop program it my gosh if you can understand if i would really understand this in detail i would write what i could man i will change the world and in a big way if i would understand this in detail but i'm i'm still new to this volkswagen group of america <laughs> that's interesting volkswagen group of america volkswagen is a german car manufacturer and it says volkswagen group of america yeah why not san francisco canada united states volkswagen data lab munich see munich germany uh, dwf systems inc it's actually very near my place I'm living in Switzerland, but not not really far away from this place. Yeah, I could be there in, I would say, three hours by car, and maybe one and a half hours, two hours, if I uh, would go by by car or train or and, and airplane. So I could be there th theoretically about in two and a half three hours huh? so it's not really far from my place maybe 300 kilometers 350 kilometers or so maybe something like that maybe even even closer so uh dwave systems inc born uh, berkeley canada oh, what is bc bc um, my gosh if you understand this here write the write your codes man and run it on the device system okay I need to go back for a moment because uh, let's go back into our quantum thing your hybrid classical approach to, to solving shit on problems okay go back to see it's go through step by step it's very interesting finish finish <laughs> great job you just finished the factoring demo more on factoring in your Jupyter net notebook or on the next demo classical network analysis oh, I got the solution here already I understand this tuck, 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 tuck. Tuck, 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 tuck. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Here we go, awesome. Yep. Haha. <laughs> Don't ask me how I do it, but I understand this. In some way, my brain is capable of seeing uh, the result very quickly. Uh, I just saw it and I have the ability to see the result, the way. It's interesting. And my brain is in some ways trained or. Uh, Don't ask me how it works. But I can see the result when I just look at it. Some people say, what? That? I saw it. See? Tack, 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 tack. Okay. I, I <laughs> okay, I show you. Tack, 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 tack. Well, here we go back. Why not here and like that at the end? No, you can't. You can't. This is not used. <laughs> uh, see, see. Huh? Yeah. And we. Da 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 da
tac, 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 tac. The only way is we use this two times. Otherwise you will never come back here. Because it's only one way or you use that way. Yeah, I don't want to get too heavy on that one. But I like it. So, okay, let's start from here. Zack, that is a way, 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 that is a way. We eliminate everything of that and go back the same way. Or when we're here, well, we have to do that one. And that is already, maybe that's a towel. Yeah, come on, just joking here. Okay, great. Create your own application. That is the thing what you can do. Learn for more in-depth learning on how to approach factoring as a CSP. Try the interactive Jupyter Netbook. <laughs> Create, visit the Waves GitHub sits to access the uh, source code for this demo and the Ocean SDK. I need the Ocean SDK. This is a quantum cooler. Solve a constraint satisfaction problem on the quantum computer. Okay. To the following code, send satis uh, what satisfiability problem to the DWF system specified in your local configuration file import okay let's copy that one here for a moment tools ocean sdk stack provides a chain of tools on github that implements the computations needed to transform on arbitrary really post problems to a form so solvable on a quantum com uh, quantum solver documentations on the read doc on uh, an overview on using ocean software with both end to end usage usage examples and simple examples to get you started and links to each tools documentation leap login to solve problems on d-wave systems and to learn more about quantum computing this is what you have to go to to the leap if a uh, sign up if and then uh, actually if you can sign up then you get granted access to a quantum computer from the wife and this is this one the ones they showed probably yeah or some of them may they have many there's another one qq but it's uh, this is something and this is a new world you know so DWF systems, check out DWF systems, the leader in the development and delivery of quantum computing systems and software and the world's only commercial supplier of a quantum computer. Commercial supplier. I have access to quantum computer. I run my first quantum com quantum code. Yeah. Or actually uh, accessed the first time a quantum computer. It was maybe one of them. And there are okay, currently available tools. Any exemplar construct a binary quadratic model from a constraint satisfaction problem with small constraints over binary variables. And there are a cloud, a minimal implementation of the R -sist, uh, of the REST interface used to communicate with the DWF sampler server hybrid minimal python a general minimal python framework for building hybrid asynchronous demo decomposition samples of quadratic constraints binary optimization qubo problems and then it facilitates 
experiment ex experimentation with structures and parameters for uh, trailering the uh, composition solver to a problem the framework enables rapid develop rapid development and insight to uh, expected performance of pro product has versions of its experimental prototypes uh, experimental prototypes it does not provide real-time an implementation of simulated annealing sampler installer for dwave ocean tools installer for finding graph matter embedding developed to aim but inside problems on the quantum annealer third party software quantum mark uh, sample for DWS system mm, from programs based on specific DWF QPU mm, system Python DSL for constructing QUBU from mathematical expressions Python Cubo allows you to create cubes or using models from flexible mathematical expressions easily uh, maybe I need that one here for devotion tool I need to write pipe install the ocean tool type p type install I will show you that after I will show you that after how I do that probably yeah I will probably show you that after so let's go how about that source Start my server. Hmm. Huh. Start my server. Here we go. Dwave online learning platform. I just started the server. <laughs> Actually, the ones I had there probably. Yeah. Seeing there. So you can get some beginners type portion tool structure significant social networks factorization this is how you got to open the book and that's how you can learn you got all the necessary information factoring with dwave system uh, here you can learn go through examples uh, you put in on uh, off on switch for the light what it needs as we saw in the demo before you know we know the result the light is on uh, but we need to know the switches is it on or off on or off when you put in some uh, when we have it connected to electricity this is the result and this is what we need because we need to put it on uh, off or on this is uh, the way to the light on or off so true table for end and then it will be converted into uh, the quantum code because it's binary code 
in some way and then we later on gave the constraint to CSP and uh, defined for binary variables uh, okay convert to so ocean software example overview of ocean software solving problems on the d-wave ocean software stack abstraction layer so you can go through and read everything to understand the d-wave system of classical sampler the component used to minimize uh, bqm and therefore solve the original problem with uh, the quantum uh, interpreter Nealer or call uh, the quantum application quantum solver quantum interpreter and stuff that I constraints so in GPU code compute resources application data computer application okay the tools I'll give me an example here see how ocean tools are used with those end-to-end -end examples factoring we had the factoring we already were there right yep advanced level beginners level vertex cover so this is one problem the graph and then getting into more uh, three-dimensional shape or into three-dimensional shapes from a two-dimensional into uh, an area and uh, one-dimensional, two-dimensional in some way, and this is three-dimensional in some way. I already ball knot, yeah, a knot gate. So we need the tools here. That are the tools. We were there already. This is leap let's go to leap so we are now back at my uh, time and as you can see I use the quantum computer I really use the quantum computer it used two examples or experiments uh, because I run it already before uh, and I have uh, 59 seconds and 474 milliseconds left so you see i really use the quantum computer and that is the result that is of your last thousand problems which i have completed so the time was there so that's uh, that's interesting Two hours back. Problem ID solved May 18th. My time it was zero three zero nine. Actually three zero nine. So and I used that system for the moment. So maybe I need to get the lower noise system. Let me switch to the lower noise system for a moment and let's run the code again just for to test it okay factorization go forwards let me say yeah will I, I will put the, the same 49 I saw that one I saw that one I saw that one uh, yeah that one too and now I'm going to run it okay same time and let's leave let's go back to the dashboard and yeah in fact i used it you see and another experiment counted down 3997 left and yeah i accessed the quantum computer three times now because you have 4000 experiments remaining uh, 4,000 experiments uh, actually you have yeah remaining but uh, now 
uh, I used three experiments. So I have 3,997 experiments left. And the calculation time from one minute uh, is uh, got down very, very sh short, but it got down, as you can see. Uh, I still have a lot of left. But I really access the quantum computer, my gosh. I really access the quantum computer, this is no joke. For the first time ever, my gosh, this is history. Eh? <laughs> I love it, I love it. This is no joke, ladies and gentlemen. I really access the quantum computer out from, I accessed it from Switzerland. Yeah, this is real. This is the real stuff in history. Yeah. My gosh, I love this. I really love this. This is real stuff. This is real stuff. It took the same amount of time, but I need to switch to the lower noise version. It's a little bit less for the moment, but it's lower noise. So. I like the lower noise one. This is that one, see? See? Five instead of two dash one, five. Or underscore, two underscore one. It is of the five. So I switched to the five and the five is primary system, online, D wave, 2000 Q, lower noise system, the lower noise system. So we need that one so i switch to that probably that is that was may, maybe that is one the one which he showed and it was upgraded and it's getting that one but uh, maybe they have more of them i i believe they have m more of them but uh, yeah awesome this is really awesome try it okay what is this Oh, online. Oh, yeah, the file viewer. We were there already. So, accessing the files. Stretch, leap, demos, the factorization we already had. Helper images. Let me show the image. Interesting. Yeah, uh, all the ways and solving stuff. 21, three times, three times seven is 21. Okay, we got that one. So we need to go back. So, and notification circuit, example light and switches. So we already know that. We saw that this is the light and switch, which I showed you before. So we don't need that one. I already showed you that before. So let's go back. Factorization overview. Yeah, see, factorization again. You got a complete source, how it works directly accessing quantum stuff here. Huh? This is this is awesome. This is really awesome. It's open for the public. Actually, it's uh, available for people who signed up. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So, let me close that for a moment. Uh, let me go back to structural imbalance, helper images, and another folder. Never saw that one. Okay. Yeah, I saw that one before. How about this one? Oh yeah, I explained you that one. Yeah, yeah. Find a way. Find a way, find a way, find a way. Yeah. Yeah, well, if you understand that, we could go through uh, that a little bit later. Factorization, yeah, we saw that, close that, and we're getting back here. Try the lower noise chip, yeah. Learn about increased performance in the new device solution to the network. 
which uses the lower noise QPU to demonstrate methods you can use to improve your solution. Learn about the increased performance, even increased performance and lower noise because, okay, so we switch to that one. Supported solvers. Okay, awesome. And here is my API token which I can then program my own stuff and put it in to access the quantum computer that way. Uh, yeah, I should install that one, but this will be shown probably in the next session. Let me run another demo. Social network analysis, quantum materials. Oh, well, demo two, one, one, two, three, you know, step by step, right? Social network analysis, hard optimization problems can be a good fit for the quantum computing, for the DeWeb quantum computer. Hard optimization problems can be a good fit for the DeWeb quantum computer. Let's access that one. I like it. Ah, I should read that one also here, huh? In this demo. We will learn why optimization problems are difficult and important. Understand how optimization problems are formulated for the DWF system. Solve an optimization problem on the quantum computer. Wasn't I already there? <laughs> Network analysis using optimization. This demo shows how to use a quantum computer to anticipate the emergency of violent behavior in social networks. Unbalanced social networks are predictive of violence. We don't need violence. This is bad. Eliminate it. Determ yeah, well, you know, uh, de determining the level of imbalance is a natural fit for the D-Wave quantum computer. So it will find the imbalance. Where are the problems actually? And find problems and then we can take further on actions on it. The techniques shown here apply to a broad range of optimization problems in which we want to find the best or very good solutions from a set of possible of possible ones okay optimization problems next one here we go oy, 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 oy. optimization problems give a network of relationships given a network of relationships it's possible to ask questions like first uh, who are the social influencers? Who are those people, you know? Use minimum vertex cover to the determine the smallest group of members who are part of a of very of every relationship. So this guy is a part of a relationship. This, 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 these are the key holders in some way. I guess that one has the largest one because it's connected to every group. Huh? It's like the main one. <laughs> you know, so this one is also connected, but not directly connected to that. There's the missing link, but this one is connected. So I already find the main person ask that one huh? because you can access all the people, you know, it's okay. Next ones. Yeah, I got to add a second. Okay. Second question. A second. Uh, how should, uh, who should work be, what? How should work be uh, scheduled? Use graph coloring to assign jobs to members who share limited or closely resources. Uh, uh, costy, costy. Share limited or costly resources. Yeah. Let me read this again. Use graph coloring to assign jobs to members who share limited or costly resources where no two members are assigned job requiring the same shared resources. Hmm.
Cash limited or costly resources where no two members are sign, sign the job requiring the same shared resources. Okay. Dif different, 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 different. The blue one should not be connected because they're same, they share the same resources. They should not be connected because they sh share the same resources. They should not be connected because they share the same resources. Or actually, not share, share limited or costly resources. Yeah, as mentioned, here we go. I love that. Yeah, this is interesting. This one too, as you can see, not connected. And this one too, also not connected. So those are not connected, the blue ones, the yellow ones, and the green ones, yeah? Because they have the same color and same uh, and share the same limited uh, or uh, or costly resources. You know? So let's go to position three. Uh, I love this kind of stuff. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, number three. Thank you while still uh, bearing with me, still here. Uh, if you're really interested in this is the source, uh, this is one of the sources you uh, should go to and uh, and watch and test it by yourself. You have, you, you may could have access like I have uh, to a real quantum computer. My gosh, ladies and gentlemen, 2019 for the first time ever here in Switzerland. Okay, three. Can we anticipate violence in a social network? No, I don't. We don't want violence, right? So let's determine it. Find this, uh, those who may do it and then eliminate those kind of uh, actions. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, take further on actions on some of uh, on them, yeah. Let's see. Use structural balance to divide the members into two members. Uh, into two teams. Read me, uh, let me read this again. Use structural balance to divide the members into two teams. Uh, where relationships among members on the same team are friendly and on different teams are hostile. I would definitely go with the friendly team ones. Yeah. How about you? Okay, let's say these are the friendly ones, the blue ones, and the yellows are the 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 yellows. Not because. Okay, let's not talk about this here because this is a demo about. A quantum computer. Okay, this is there. This is one team, and this is the other team. Okay, divided with that line in the middle. So we can we clearly structure the teams here. Yeah. So if this team is negative or hostile we have to separate them may uh, uh, yeah separate and then take further on actions or even uh, eliminate them eliminate uh, in terms of uh, cancel their membership or you know and, and stuff like this and so on this demo explores the optimization involved in question three huh okay in question three so I want the good one that a team of the good ones and I don't want the other ones <laughs> ladies and gentlemen okay optimization task finding the minimum vertex cover vertex covering is the problem of finding a set of nodes in a network uh, such that all edges connected to at least one of the nodes in the set. Of course, we need a, a real re reliable network. We need all the connections to see all the connections. And uh, yeah, 
let's not bring any social uh, uh, environment in here because this is a quantum computer, a quantum computing, okay? Let's stay with this. Let's just say that team, I want to have the team which, uh, which are the good ones and uh, I want to separate the good ones from the hostile ones, all right? Okay, the minimum vertex cover is the smallest such set possible in the network. That is the minimum vertex cover. Graph coloring. The graph coloring problem is to assign colors to, ele to elements in the graph, uh, to elements in a graph. Now let me read this again. The graph coloring problem is to assign colors to el elements in the graph. Uh, here. Subject to constraints, of course, the good, this team and that team. A common constraint is that no two adjust, uh, ad adjacent, or how do you say that? Adjacent ele elements may have the same color. Word Vertex coloring, vertex coloring, okay. Coloring a map of the United States so that, uh, so that no two adjacent states have the same color is an example of this problem. Yeah, that means every state should have another color. Awesome. And they taking the example of the United States. Yeah, because United States, UN, USA. That means United, United huh? States, because there are many states. And A, USA means America. In America, they are there are many states which actually should be united. Should be united. Uh, that is USA. United States of America. So they, they use, they use, uh, I say they because that's what they use here because it's, an Amer it's, it's America uh, with the D wave. And for the first time, I have access uh, in Europe to a D-Wave system, a quantum computer. That's awesome. And I guess uh, in other parts of Europe too. And may continue uh, to be accessible or that you will have access in other countries um, later on uh, in other nations uh, in this world. Let's see. Finding structural balance in a single assigned uh, social network, finding structural balance, finding structural balance in a signed social network. Okay, this is the network and we want to balance it into the good and the other ones, the bad ones, right? made to say, yeah? So we found it, the good and the, the other ones. Yeah. So, oh my god it's getting I mean forget that what I just said I mean this is uh, the connection between members of the network are signed uh, okay let me read it in a signed uh, social network the connections between members of the network are signed that is set to either plus one or minus one plus minus it's always like this right to pre present friendly or hostile relationships as i said you know, something like this such a network is balanced if and only 
if it can be cleanly divided. Hmm? You got that? Cleanly divided. Good, bad, plus, minus. Okay. Uh, into two subnetworks. The good and the bad ones. They call it the friendly or the hostile relationships. Uh, subnetworks with only friendly relationships, plus one. Within each subnetwork, subnetwork, yeah, and only hostile relationships minus one between the the subnetworks. Okay, the net the network has structural imbalance. Otherwise, the degree of structural imbalance of the network is the minimum number of relationships that cannot meet the criteria of this party partitioning. Be aware that the problem formulation. Be aware, be aware that the problem formulation for the quantum computer is nearly identical, but with opposite sign convention. Hmm, because it's one and zero at the same time. Or it can be zero and one or plus one and minus one at the same time. Nearly identical, but with opposite sign convention. Sign. Si sign. Okay. Opposite sign. Opposite sign convention. Okay. Plus, minus. Yeah. Plus, minus. minus. Plus, minus, <laughs> you know, no, I'm joking. Uh, <clears throat> it should not be a joke. Clearly divided, uh, clearly dividing, okay? Friendly, hostile, not good. Uh, the second one, okay, finding the maximum independent set. In a network, an independent set comprises nodes that are mutually disconnected from the other in the network. A maximum independent set is simply the largest maximum is simply the largest possible independent set in the network. Okay. Finding the maximum cut the maximum cut a cut is a partition of a network into two sub networks of a network is a, into two sub networks cut sub network 1 Subnetwork two. Sub cut. Okay. Cut. Then we have the subnetwork one and the subnetwork two. Okay. Finding the maximum cut of the network means to find the cut that results in largest number of connections 
with an endpoint in each subnetwork, uh, subnetwork, the largest cut for every connection. Because they have every of them have uh, in some way some kind. Of, this is the largest cut here, 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 right through. But of course, divided by the friendly and the hostile ones. Okay. So next one is an example social network from Romeo and Julia. Oh my, oh you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Social network analysis. An example social network from Romeo and Ju Juliet. Juliet, not Julia. Juli Juliet. Juliet. Two husband, uh, two households. <laughs> two households, both alike in dignity. Whoa, awesome. Consider the uh, montages and capulets of Verona, oh my gosh, uh, from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. The social network conta contains hostile red, hostile red. So, okay, they're hostiles to each other and friendly green. Uh, this one okay they are friendly okay uh, that's okay yeah interesting let me overfly this for a second I need to analyze this for a moment before the quantum computer will really do it okay let me check Da, da, da. Here we go. Yeah, that's 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 nice. Okay, uh, a little bit more than I should have analyzed it. Okay. Go. Okay. Interesting. One more. Or two more. One, two. Coming back. Coming back. Hostile. Hostile. I need uh, two more. Uh, da, da. Friendly, 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 hostile. The connection is not there. The connection is also not there. The connection between them and them. Two. Uh, I need two more, and then, uh, and then I'm finished. Maybe three, three more. Okay, this is this is real. Three more. As I see it. Just check, check, check. Friendly, friend, zack, 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 zack. That's a good angle, a triangle. Uh, and that's a good. Okay, go back. One more, two more. Zack, zack. Which I was here. That connection is. It's good, huh? <laughs> hmm, okay. And this one, Zack. Zack, zack, zack. No, okay, that's the. That's the. Okay. 
Oh, I see. And this is the uh, triangle which are the bad one here between them. Romeo, Lord Montage, they have a good connection, but they are both f uh, friendly to Lord Capulet. This connection and the Ju Juliet. There is Romeo and Juliet, not a direct connection here. Huh. But they have a good connection. So th that's interesting uh, in some way. Just, uh, just listen for a moment. Romeo and Juliet, right? Huh? That is what it's all about here at the moment, right? I mean, of course there is much more, but Romeo is not directed, is not friendly nor unfriendly with Juliet. As you can see, right? Romeo is not uh, friendly nor hostile to Juliet. But Romeo is hostile to this person, Lord Capulet, but Juliet is friendly to Lord Capulet. So may this guy like Juliet, but not Romeo. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> uh, interesting is this is the guy who has two haters or two not friendly relationships may but friendly to ladies oh well that's the wife i guess lord and lady capulet and they are friendly to juliet so juliet likes both of them but romeo which actually should be with juliet the romeo hates lord capsule and therefore but there is no connection to the lady. Huh. Hmm. The world is full of surprises. Huh? Some guy lives, loves a woman. And the wo some woman loves a man. In connections you will never understand. Yeah. Excuse me. I don't want to be get romantic. It's just because it's about Juliet. A Romeo and Juliet, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, this is called an example. Example. An example. Example social network from Romeo and Juliet. Okay, so there's one more I need to analyze. This, uh, this lady here. Because why is she up here when this guy is down, when her man is here? They have good connections. Good connections, but there is no connection. There is a band. That's interesting. I need to bring in this one here. Okay. Who is that one? Good. Bad connection to that one. Are they important here in some way? Romeo, that. Okay. That, that, that's a good triangle here. Okay. Romeo likes the montage and Juliet likes the Capulet. Those ladies don't like each other. Right? So but there's no connection. Because Juliet likes this, that woman don't like her and Julia uh, and Romeo likes her but not them. So this is strange because Romeo likes the other couple and Juliet likes the other couple but it should be between uh, about uh, Romeo and Juliet, right? Who are those two? Marcuti. 
plays a rule with that he only they they only die they only don't like each other there but this guy is friendly with Romeo likes of course this couple too that's also a good connection here hmm like Romeo so they both like those couple this couple the montage and this guy don't like this guy but likes that couple so in some way that's interesting that he does has no connection to Juliet but is friendly to I understand so this guy shouldn't have any connection to Rome Romeo right but should have connection to Juliet because they like this couple oh or actually this couple I like that that's a good graph that is a short analysis ladies and gentlemen let's go forward I like that I analyzed it already before the quantum computer did <laughs> it took me just a little bit longer <laughs> instead of some uh, tens or hundreds of milliseconds yeah milliseconds you cannot even snip with your fingers that fast the quantum computer solved this but let's see maybe it's a little bit more uh, time it it needs to uh, comp compute all that things but i don't think it needs more 50 connections one two three one two three four five six seven eight uh, it every have four connection no three three uh, there four three four four so they have all four except Juliet huh? three has no connections to that which is the, uh, their you know or uh, they so this guy uh, she has no connection there and no connections to them okay interesting that's funny strange but uh, that's a nice graph uh, it's a short analysis ladies and gentlemen it took me how long five ten minutes maybe more a quantum computer will solve this in and in a fraction of a second in a fraction in a fraction and it could be even much faster yeah okay no problem let's go forward let's continue consider the mon montages and capulet I, I already wrote read this I already read this let's divide the network in fair Verona into two groups separated by the Natchik River. Divide the network into two separate groups. And before I show that, I've never done this before. I think the group will be separated into into the couplets and into the mortgages which Romeo is more related to the montage Montage may I say that incorrect montage and Juliet is more on the side of excuse me or on the side of the capulet capulet here montage here Romeo uh, here and Juliet there and those are the outstanders I've never known but I analyzed it let's see Capulet Capulet Juliet and that one because connection here yeah, see exactly how I said that divide Monte, Monte Romeo didn't I say that and the one here which is related I analyzed that but this was a yeah uh, this was not the quantum computer solver this was just a, a demonstration of a graph and it didn't of course computer so much faster so yeah okay at the start of the story the Romeo and Juliet have um, yeah, 
have yet to meet. Of course, because they have no direct connection, see? To meet, to meet, to meet. The network in Verona can be arranged to that all relationships on each side of the river are friendly. They are, that is the river. They are friendly to each other. And on that side, and on that side, they are friendly to each other. See? Friendly here and friendly. As I said, exactly as I said. Yeah, I could see that. Analyzes, you know, I love it. <laughs> so, uh, while all relationships across the river are hostile. So, hostile, 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 hostile. See, I love this kind of things. Yeah, therefore, this network is balanced. Yep. And we could see if we exactly, and, and you know, quantum computers do that extremely fast. So if you use quantum computers to solve so, such things, you can clearly see the connections and prevent for, uh, bad things made to happen, and may prevent bad things from happening, may. Because, you know, people are people and they like to fight, some of them like to fight instead of being friendly to each other or actually help each other. Some of them do for whatever reason. I don't know their brain. This is an own universe, you know. It's it's good that it's like this. But if you really think, we, we deal with people uh, almost every day, right? And uh, different people, it's, it's like you're meeting different universes all the time. Yeah? You never know how they, say, they think. The only way what you know or the only thing you know is how may you operate or how you think how you function yeah you can perfect that how you function or actually how you work how you how you think and how you want to think and your dreams you can set a goal and so on and so on. but you can set that in a, in a uh, yeah social that's why it's called an example like an experiment an example social network See, there are infinite possibilities, infinite uh, samples, yeah? but I love to see that. I love to, uh, I love to understand, uh, I, I, I see this, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's, uh, there are infinite uh, possibilities, infinite actually, infinite infinite possibilities and uh, that's what it is but there is much more behind and this and this and this and this that's amazing and uh, you always learn you learn the whole life but I'm not going uh, to be phys oh my gosh I'm not going to um, uh, be philosophy with you yeah? here in this demo this is all about quantum computer D wave leap I love this I, I like that I really liked it it's simple it's explainable but make it easier make it even more easier but that's nice that's nice that's that's great so next one is introducing balance imbalance here we go didn't I say Romeo and Juliet didn't have a direct connection? They should be friendly too, but they are not friendly to the others they like. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, introducing imbalance. Imbalance, my gosh. We, we need to find the solution here. What light through yonder window, what? What light through yonder window breaks? What? It is the east and Juliet is the sun. It is the east and Juliet is the sun. So the sun, let me start word, uh, reverse. The sun 
which in the east it's called the sun is going up in the east or is coming up in the east the golden the 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 shiny uh, how do you say that the sun is the east the east is the sun the sun is the east and it shines through the window and this is Juliet so maybe she is an Asian woman <laughs> oh my gosh <sighs> yeah okay let's continue here things change when we introduce a new relationship Romeo a montage meets Juliet Capulet. Oh, Romeo is actually a montage, which I already saw. This is maybe the son of those, and this is maybe the, the brother. Uh huh. Okay, oh, that's like a family. Probably, huh? And Juliet is Capulet. Okay. This is the father, the mother, Juliet, the daughter, and maybe that's her brother. That's a male family. Not sure about them two right now, just to say because they have no, they have just the first name. But I, and that could be the daughters. You know. So, you need to find a connection here. <laughs> okay, now we have a new friendly connection. Friendly connection between two families. They may don't really like each other. At least all the others to each other. Huh? I remember, I just uh, for a short, I remember I met... I could tell you a story. It was exactly like this. First, they uh, they loved each other. They were boyfriend and girlfriend, and they got divided. They, they he supported her, and, and were maybe were wise, yeah, for some years. Uh, but because the parents got into in some way, I know the reason probably yeah uh, in into uh, like a, a family fight they got uh, uh, yeah separated and uh, that was sad so this is like Asian in some way some <laughs> Asian culture this is very different but uh, yeah I had some experience and uh, uh, when I saw that and uh, sometimes I don't really understand how people function but can you ever understand this? Mm, probably when I say this, it's like you can ask yourself, maybe the only person you will ever understand is yourself. Maybe. It would be nice if you have... Uh, yeah, it's philosophically. Uh, I'm speaking a little bit here, but that's okay. So probably... Uh, well, I, I would I would see that... Uh, that uh, the imaginable, the Im unimaginable thing happens, you know. So, I can talk this in another video, but this video is all about quantum computer. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, we were with a friendly relationship, right? Friendly connection, okay. This one... Uh, this one connection may, may this one connection makes it impossible to find structural balance in the network yeah because they are the only ones who really have a friendly connection to each other what is that that's okay imbalance leads to instability oh my gosh yeah oh. Oh uh oh, the father is. 
no I'm joking uh, imbalance lead to instability this violent delights have violent ends doesn't need to be it's just in the mind it's a mindset and probably felt with the heart okay I need to continue this here for a moment <clears throat> on quantum computer stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know Juliet now loves oh Juliet now love of Romeo creates a loop of connections called a thrust Traded loop that violates the social rule. I believe they were Asians. <laughs> yeah, excuse me for that one. <laughs> I just needed to say. Yeah, focus, Morris. Morris, focus. Focus on quantum computing. <laughs> yeah. Focus on quantum computing here for a moment. Okay, the enemy of my friend is my enemy. Let me read that again to understand. The enemy of, come on, the enemy of my friend is my enemy. Okay, the enemy of my friend is my enemy oh my gosh i don't think so uh yeah me mm. this social uncertainty social uncertainty is correlated with the future increase in violence my gosh i think the parents are doing so maybe uh yeah excuse me continue what was previous stable that line here tick, 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 or that cut line here tick, 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 was previously not there so the connection was stable or the, the, the. What was previously stable is now uncertain. For whom? For the father, the Lord, yeah. yeah. Uh, and indeed, Romeo and Juliet is a target, a tragedy after all. Strange. That's what I don't understand in some way, you know. People make everything a little bit too difficult. A life should not be like this. It should be love. It starts all with love, right? And then it ends with this? Why? They're probably there's the only question you can ask if you don't understand this. Why? And honestly, I have this question too. Why? Okay, let's not go into this. Let's stay here on on that subject for a moment. Yeah, but it's uh, if you if you if you see this, okay, my my dear listener, okay, I really appre appreciate that you listen, but. I'm showing you something, even if it has to do with quantum computing and a social uh, behavior or social networking or social understanding to to be solved by the uh, like quantum uh, code or quantum power, however you want to call it right? at the moment. This thing right now here, social network analysis, which it's just been done by you know, may you've heard of uh, Romeo and Juliet, right? That kind of thing. I've never really saw it. I just saw some parts here and there, but uh, right here, that explanation 
It's not just that you see it. If you read it, I repeat, if you read it, if you see it, if you analyze it, if you understand it, you may can relate this in some way to your own life, yes or no. Or you will have a broad, maybe a broader understanding of something. Huh? Didn't I say that nice? A broader understanding of something. We may never know exactly what it is or what's the meaning or the purpose behind. As I said, maybe you can only understand your own life. And yeah, that's the only way, that's the only thing, thing or person you ever have to be, yourself. But that I explained in some way in another video. So please share and like, subscribe. Uh, I would like to have more viewers who subscribe or more people to subscribe to my videos uh, that I can share some some would say common knowledge, some would say special knowledge, some would say interesting stuff, some even would uh, consider it as entertainment. I will show you something uh, I believe most of the time or almost almost every time you have never seen before. See my introduction video on my YouTube channel. Uh, that's what I'm saying right there. So share it right now. I mean, after the video, share it, share it, go to more people or send it to more people, share it to your friends. Uh, I truly believe I can bring you some infor some knowledge, some experience, something which you can learn because we all learn the whole life, right? And uh, yeah, just in this short text, this, this is interesting. It's really interesting because this one here, uh, in some way, it's not just because of uh, Romeo and Juliet or uh, that, that, that kind of story. It's because of how they explain it here. It's interesting. They show you uh, some kind of way, a solution or determination of how something can be solved, can work or be solved and or. or uh, it's, uh, it's interesting, but you need to see it and under, uh, analyze it and understand. So I try to make this in a short way for you, okay? In a video, just listen, bear with me, or actually stay with me, reason, someone would say reason with me, I would say just listen and, and think with me, understand, and it's, it's an interesting time, it's interesting, yeah? Okay, let's continue here. Uh, I would go with love. Absolutely, no doubt, because love is and can always be there if both people, if both of those individuals really have the heart, have the heart, have the heart for each other. Not that I said that three times with the heart. All good things are three. No, because that you understand, you know. Love moves mountains, right? We say that love. Uh, you travel miles. Yeah, love has no boundaries and all the kind of things. Yeah. I really, I really thought that, and I still believe. I still believe. Someday. Someday, someday, there is no barrier. Trust me, there is no barrier. It's only in the mind, in the head, you know, it's only in the head. And if you really understand, if you really feel love, no way will be too far. No cost will be too expensive. Oh, forget that one, forget that one. You will find a way, you will find a way. And hope is probably the only thing 
we can hold on and which keeps you alive. Hope and love. Okay, we are uh, in, in in this. Uh, uh, let I, I continue for a moment here because this is quantum quantum computer stuff. The other one, the other thing is like, yeah, it's life, and uh, I still hope. Okay, just to say, let's continue here. This network cannot be balanced. Frustration occurs either when friendly relation, re, relationships lie across the river, across counters, across borders, and across the river, they call it here, you know, so. Or when uh, hostile relationships remain on only one side of the river. So maybe he turned into, they start to love, he was friendly to the father, but the father was not friendly to him. This is a good example in some way, but I don't like this negative things. I, I, th there is a connection and the connection will always be there somehow, you know, but uh, there is much more to it. And that and this cannot be explained or described. You need to feel it. So I'm always getting like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm always getting like in that kind of uh, stuff. Like I continue here for a moment to finish that kind of demo here, which is all about quantum computer. Yeah, quantum computer, you know. Finding the division that minimizes the number of frustrated relationships is a difficult and important problem. They call it problem, but there must be a solution. Because to every problem, there is a solution. And maybe that problem is called love. Maybe not maybe it is trust me in this love is true love is the ultimate solution and maybe that's why we're here and now i'm talking again about this because it's really important this is really really this is probably one of the most important things we ever know okay but i need to con I, I, I finished that demo for a moment. I understand, you know, so. This de determination of imbalance is an excellent fit for the D-Wave quantum computer. <laughs> I will send all my problems, everything which is not solved, everything which is difficult and have, imp and have uh, which is frustrated, or frustrated. I will send that to the quantum computer to solve. <laughs> I'm just joking. If that would be that easy. Well, uh, what should I do? Do you think I will send it to a quantum computer to solve it? No, it needs to be solved by the heart. And one day, I believe it truly will. But this is a... Uh, a quantum computer problem here in this example. So uh, let's see that connection. Aha! Uh -huh. I see Juliet switch the side. <whistles> uh, excuse me, I should not continue. To... Ah, Juliet moved to Romeo because she loves him so much. Juliet's new love for me. I stop here. <laughs> I stop here. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Next, programming the quantum computer. Okay. 
programming the quantum computer. Oh my. Programming the quantum computer. Optimi optimization problems, including social networks, only requires that you set two fundamental controls to program the quantum computer. One, or point one, degree to which two variables agree. Qubit coupling string. Okay, point two or point two, degree to which a variable tends to particular outcome, qubit bias. Okay, I want that this connection turns into a friendly relationship because of the love they have or because of the love they have, I want that this relationship turns into a friendly relationship. I would love to see that. My gosh, I'm explaining this in a philosophical way again. This is quantum computer stuff, explanation how it could be solved no? for a social network or in a social network, you know? You understand, right? So those two controls, those two controls are sufficient to construct any problem from a D-Wave quantum computer. Sufficient, sufficient. Hmm. Uh, but only for a D-Wave quantum computer right to solve or to find this I, I i like to see i would like to see the solution here how they solve it how that quantum computer solve this so let's see to to program a signed social network to program the signed social network like the romeo and juliet example we set all the qubit bias to zero And the qubit coupling strange strength to plus one hostile or to minus friendly. Okay. Friendly point. Uh, other optimization problems require only that you set different values for those two fundamental controls. Plus or minus plus or minus why do I name it here plus when this is actually minus uh, negative hmm? oh you my gosh if you want to understand I I encourage you to read this so uh, I could read this a little bit later but uh, It would take a uh, more amount of time, but this is one solution. And now one situation, excuse me, one situation. This is another situation. Okay. Half, half. Yeah, right. This is another solution. Okay. Interesting. Uh huh. <laughs> and that's another situation. Okay. Switched. Decide. Interesting. And then it becomes clear. Love is the power of love. All right. Yeah, the power of love. Awesome. Yeah, the power of love. Yeah, yeah the power of love. Real world examples. 
All right. Real world examples. The correlation between structural imbalance and violence is seen not only in the fiction of Shakespeare. Oh, you see here, fiction of Shakespeare. It's also real in this world. So this is, these are the countries, the mainland on our planet around water here. Huh? There is uh, Antarctica and and the sub Antarctica and stuff like that. you know so so this is America this is like Turkey or something this okay let's see let's see violence amongst the gangs of L A Nakamura 2011 studied the gangs of L A and found that violence has struggle uh, has <laughs> that violence has strongly correlated with the degree of imbalance in the social network because of social networking reference links yeah i could go here to see let's see it why not github so you what is this Carnage Mellon University. Carnegie, Carnegie, how do you say that? Carnegie Mellon University. Okay, you can read a lot of things here. Visualization. Yeah, you can. You, you, you can read this here. So I need to go back. So this was uh, uh, maybe a Japanese, maybe Nakamura sounds like Japanese who actually st uh, studied. In an American at an, um, an American university, K, K, Mellon University, yeah, I studied there, and made and had this like a, a study. So how can I put that away here? So uh, just by clicking on it again, no. Yeah, this is <laughs> tool, tool. Yeah, okay. So global terror terrorist networks. Oh my gosh. Okay. So where is the uh, global here in the Middle East or somewhere, huh? Researchers from Los Alamos National Lab, L A N L, studied structural imbalance in the context of global terrorist networks 2017, so two years, about two years ago, using a D wave quantum computer and the Stanford Mapping Militant organization's data sheet. I will go here a little bit later, uh, or just after here, after the reading here. Later in this demo, we take a look at the subset of the data that LANL has written out here, Los Alamos National Lab, used to used in their research that that from Syria oh, Syria this is Syria here Syria should be actually here sounds more like uh, yeah could be Syria okay so hmm they studied that on a quantum computer it could be solved very quickly right the data sheet that's interesting let's go to the link no oh, PDF. Come on, should be much faster. My gosh, my connection is actually fast. But so this is using the D Wave Two X. This is the much faster one, actually. Or they upgraded it. Let's let's say that quantum computer to explore the formation of global terrorist networks. So that had. 1150 qubits in the machine at that time and now I know they have already 5000 plus maybe 5500 or maybe even 6000 or maybe even much more maybe they are approaching 7, 8, 9, 10 plus 1000 qubits already and I believe they will go 
much higher over time in the nearest time they will be uh, reaching hundreds of uh, excuse me hundreds of thousands of qubits okay maybe even millions of qubits i believe you will see so that's interesting <laughs> interesting that's a lot using the da, 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 da. Uh -huh. April 27, 2017. Uh, I don't know this person. A1. Benjamin Sims. Six and Randy Roberts. Randy Roberts. Also A1. I don't know them. Unclassified unclassified yeah yeah you can show that of course so the quantum code there is an sling model equivalent to this problem this is a problem equivalent equivalently measures the number of edges a rule violence I don't like violence. December 2017. So this is like a study they made. I don't need some kind of studies. I need the results. But of course they need to do that. They, they do that. It's like a, a master work or something or a dog, you know. So the way performance on a complete curve, they should really run those experiments. I mean, I mean, they should really, really let it run 24 seven uh, on the quantum code, do mapping and giving us results in real time, you know? So third network, oh, my Syrian, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, a lot of things, iron, Theater, they call it theater here. <laughs> theater, you know, Iraq theater network. This is, I, I show you something you've probably never seen before, but this is real. I could even zoom in, you know, so going to Islamic something, it's not really that clear, but maybe here, Islamic st state or something. So the connections and oh let's not go into that kind of things i don't like this thing i i just show you that for balance over time dynamic relaxation of network imbalance how they try to solve it at the show relaxation over time uh, it got better each time an edge violating the rule is changed is changed a new global solution is obtained uh, finding this, uh, the, the, uh, the violation and then present uh, and then presenting a new global solution uh, which then can be or is obtained uh, so often that's how they try to make it try to make it more make it better or good to say it uh, it is not less curious. Uh, it is nonetheless curious that those curves are monotone. Yeah, you never know. Here could be uh, another attack or something. I mean, what kind of people are what kind of people are do something like this? Honestly, something is terribly wrong in uh, in their heads uh, but i'm not going into this this is about quantum computer it just was interesting to see that um, for a moment summary experience yeah, yeah you can read this you can pause it and read it if you like interpretation because you uh, sometimes you only get access to some things if uh, you get granted access to something you know interpretations and thoughts of future work and thoughts of future work you need to show all that kind of things to the world to people they see how it works change the world change the world for the better you know 
Hypothesis. Increased imbalance in serial network in 2013 to 2014 is due to conflicts amongst rebel groups that arose arose and arose at this time due to entry of ISIS into the conflict. Uh, I mean, this is terrible stuff. This is this is this is stupid and terrible stuff. I really, I have to say, something is terribly wrong when you do uh, some terrorist act. Ter terrorist things. Uh, you can we can see that again from the other one here. Yeah. Soci uh, soci socially, sociological research. Sociological, sociological research shows unbalanced. Sociological research shows unbalanced networks may be associated with greater level of violence. See, here it comes again. We already, I showed you that before and it was written there. So yeah, just to say unclassified, operated by Los Alamos National Security. Huh, yeah, classified, it's unclassified. So the whole world can see it. Why should that be unclassified? Uh, uh, what is classified? <laughs> you, need to, you need to show this to the world. Okay, let's go back. I saw that abstract, yeah, okay, next tried on the d -Wave quantum computer. Oh yeah, I like that one. So, tried on the D-Wave quantum computer. Ladies and gentlemen, again, a real world experiment. I'm accessing again a real quantum computer. Yes. Okay, I need to read it before I, before I do this here. Syrian data sheet. A uh, study of the violent ex extremist. extremist network in Syria found that the network was balanced in 2012. However, in 2013, an increase in active groups in the Syrian theater changed the existing landscape significantly. Didn't I show you that at almost or uh, at the last page, on the last page of that uh, PDF file of that data sheet, or something you may well and call it, of that PDF file, didn't I show you that? And now it comes again. It says it changed, you know, 2013 to, to 2014. So that they calculated that with a quantum computer, a DWF quantum computer 2x or something. At that time, it has, it had like almost the half amount of qubits at that time which i have access access to right now in 2019 uh, so in 2014 to 2000 now it increased increase uh, 2019 it, 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 it increased and increased and now we even they already have 5000 I think 5,500 uh, qubits, but what I truly believe they have much more. They're testing it. I believe they have something maybe 10,000 uh, around between 5,500 or 5,000 to 10,000 or even much more. Who knows? Uh, maybe even 15,000 or 20,000 or so. Yeah, uh, Could be possible. It's getting extreme. Okay, let's continue here. View Syrian in map. So let's analyze this for a second. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Let's see the map. Oh my. Woo. 2013 did change significantly. Yeah. Uh, I read this right. Yeah. Solve this problem using the DWF quantum computer. Okay. When I press here. I'm accessing a quantum computer. What time is it? Okay. When it's nine, five zero nine, because two hours before I started to accessing 
uh, and run a, quant a code, a demo, uh, for the first time on a quantum computer. So it's two hours after. Let's run it. Ready? Go. Okay. It took 0 0.016 seconds. Okay. To solve. To solve this. Fifty samples, unique solutions, five. Huh, five solutions. Hmm. Okay. Try it on the deep quantum computer. Results, congratulations. You just solved the problem on the QPU quantum. I need to I need to read that what what's what's the meaning of that again? Quantum unit or something. I need to read that again. It could be. It's very easy. Just go to Google and see it. Okay. Un unlike 2012, it is n not possible to balance the network from 2013, uh, shown here in the minimum structural imbalance. Shown here is the minimum structural imbalance in the network with the frustrated edges shown as dotted lines. Frustrated edges. Frustrated edges. Dotted line. Hmm. This presence of frustrated edges is predictive of violence. Hmm. Interesting is that this guy here, or this group, or, uh, has no almost almost no connections to any other of that side, and those here are like individuals. Those here, they have no connections to each other. Only this one, no connections to each other. Only this one. So they they are much more organized here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this group is much more organized here. But they are not directly connected, but in some way violence could occur. As it says, hopefully not. So performance. Of the quantum but this is next uh, as an example okay maybe that really was the data sheet yeah i think so but let's see continue oh yeah oh wow cpu cpu the, uh, the normal uh, computer would take like this okay and the quantum computer quantum processing unit of power or something it 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 took me 0 0.016 six seconds okay but this is just when it's much higher. How long would it probably take? We are already approaching 30 seconds soon. Here we go. Plus. So what do you want? The quantum computer? Or the old? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> so performance. You have just run a small example problem on the QPU. Let's now take a look at a different set of results. E evaluating performance. Structural imbalance in a graph. Structural imbalance in a graph results from the presence of frustrated loops. Recent research has demonstrated that systems of intersecting frustrated loops create, create conditions where quantum computers can provide advantage. King 2015, Andrea 2017. Okay, they they proved it that the quantum computer is much faster in solving uh, those kind of uh, conflict relations or those kind of uh, networking things. Yeah, 
I call it like that, okay, for the moment. In this illustrated example of King's 2015 findings, the quantum annealing time was 73 times less than the measured CPU time of, of like a normal computer, okay? Or supercomputer. So I could, I, I go with the quantum compute because it's much faster, yeah? But this is just like uh, some years ago. How about now? X thousands of times less or fa or, or if you want to call it faster faster performance yeah? okay this is just the beginning of quantum computing and for the first time ever in history you can really access a quantum computer yeah in 2019 publicly yeah actually you need to sign up but it's 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 a simple process and uh, if you're in that uh, uh, if you are in uh, in those countries who it's uh, who you are able to uh, sign up for leap for the D-Wave leap or uh, and and therefore actually and therefore actually accessing a quantum computer system a D-Wave quantum computer yeah? then you can do you can do so uh, for the first time ever so it's beginning the best uh, the first to demonstrate quantum advantage in your application domain so we could read that here quantum annealing quantum annealing time robust optimization experimental research findings uh, with the links uh, again of course uh, he here and here and here theoretical research findings okay theoretical what could be achieved and so on with the monte carlo simulate quantum money okay that's interesting the research article can quantum monte carlo simulate quantum annealing and stuff like this so there are, you know. <laughs> okay uh, you can read that if you like uh, further examples in optimization okay so oh there's another one further examples in optimization <laughs> these techniques can be applied to a board array of networks and optimization tasks <laughs> example examples uh, of those include finding uh, finding a set of non interacting drugs form Uh, from finding a set uh, let me read that again find a set of non-interacting drugs from a database using maximum independent set i want to find uh, that they have uh, absolutely no interference with each other okay uh, those uh, chemical compound components i want to find uh, uh, the best matches which with the best uh, results for a certain task and by therefore also minimizing the the risk the side effects or actually eliminate them if possible huh? okay maximize the, the effect by eliminating the side effects or what you don't want the unnecessary things huh? maximum effect maximum potential maximum potential maximum effect. you know what i mean so okay and so that means i find uh, not so this one that's interesting how should i interpret this okay this drug has nothing to do with that drug but don't combine it with this one. So this and this are, they have no connection. Huh? This one may with this one also not, if you don't use that one, but yeah, you know, so. 
Okay, next, uh, and, the qu and the quantum computer is very good in, in this, finding the best solution. If I, uh, think about the potential, the extreme potential quantum computer brings. It will change how we see the world in the future. We will find things we couldn't even imagine because it is so blaze, it is so fast. Huh? Supercomputers would take, would run thousands of years to find a pro to find a solution. The current supercomputers, which a quantum computer can solve in, in 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 probably in seconds. Yeah. Huh? Think about it. This is it will change our world how we know it by today listen to what i say that's what i truly believe and quantum computers are already i should i should continue with quantum computer here but let me just make sh a short bridge or a short connection however you want to define or see it okay for just for a moment quantum computers by google already running only for to advance our AI, artificial intelligence, okay? Quantum computers are running some of, some of the D-Wave quantum computers, which Google obtained or bought, have a contract with. They're running only to advance artificial intelligence so-called AI okay think about since, since already almost since, since I think about 10 years now and it will con I believe continues into the future of course so this is an upgraded and quantum computers will be upgraded this is ex this will be extreme just uh, that little 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 example from 2014 and like that Think about what you can do when you're getting access to more qubits. And this will come. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's on the way. So let it's on the way. So let's continue here. Next one. Evaluate communication network redundancy by finding the division with the densest set of interconnections using maximum cut, making a communication network much more efficient, in other way to say. Let's see how that works. Hmm. Okay, the redundancy line here. Okay, of course, connected to air, it's connected in the shortest way. How about here, like this? But that would be a longer way here for that. So, yeah, okay. Uh, assign next one assign frequencies to call towers with graph color okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay got it yeah you can read it here too optimizing uh, Optimizing tasks, finding the minimum vertex cover. We already were there, right? Minimum vertex cover. Uh, graph coloring, we already had that. Finding structural balance in a single. Uh, no, I read that again. Excuse me, I read that again. Finding structural balance in a signed social network. We already had that. 
finding the maximum independent set, we already had that, and finding the maximum cut, we already had that also, with, which is shown here. No, excuse me, shown here. That was that is not the cut. The dependent set, dependent set, maximum cut, coloring graph. Yeah. Vertex, maximum vertex. Send frequency to call towers with color graph. Color. That's the color graph. Yeah, we got that. Color graph. Yeah, that was with the United States, the different states, you know, in different colors. Coloring a map of the United States so that no two adjacent states have the same color is an example of this problem. Yeah, coloring in different color. Yeah, interesting. Congratulations. Yeah, great job. Great job! You finished. You just finished the social network demo. <laughs> yeah, I have one left here. There is coming soon. Quantum material simulation. Oh, yeah, I like that one. Simulate nature on a quantum computer. Simulate nature. Oh, that's the third demo, the last one. Should I do that also here in this demo? I will surprise you, but this is another demo. So I will make that also for you. This would be part two. This was part one. Uh, yeah, let's go back to the leap. Oh yeah, analysis using up to the leap, leap. Let's see. And yeah, I used it. You could see here. I had another experiment four. I run four already from seven to six now. And yeah. I use that quantum computer here, and this is not a joke. One, two, three, completed, completed, completed. I completed everything here, or almost. There's one more left. I really did. I really did. Yeah. Think about it. I accessed four times. The, f the fourth is not here registered because I didn't finish this. Maybe. Oh, did? Did I? Huh, it uses two. Why? But I have completed it. So, set with dates, see? Two hours later, you can see. Exactly two hours later. But maybe not on the second. Uh, the second. No, I started a little bit earlier. I started with uh, 20 and here with 10. Yeah, so 10 seconds earlier. So it's like one hour, 49 minutes and... And... 50 seconds? 49 something? 50 seconds? Something like, yeah, you know, so. You see? Uh, yeah, this, this is an example, a real example, how you can do quantum computing. But this is just the beginning. I didn't wrote the code, the quantum code. You can run your own quantum code, but for that you need to uh, sign up uh, like I did. It's free. And then you can, uh, you need to download some programs uh, which are written for to write quantum code for the DWave system or the D-Wave systems, because I already have two here, see? So, yeah, interesting, isn't it? And uh, if you're a quant, if you can write, or if you're into quantum computing, I highly advise you to use uh, the program, or actually highly advise you to develop quantum uh, codes and run it on uh, on your own on your quant on the quantum computer of uh, on the DWF quantum computer I know that IBM Microsoft and and, and others are are uh, doing uh, in China and uh, around the world Switzerland also uh, 
building quantum computers, a real quantum computer, a complete quantum co computer, may be exist, but is not shown to the public at the moment. This is a kind of quantum computer, but a, compl a real complete quantum computer oh, uh, probably will come. I, be I, I truly believe it will come. It takes some time. It's extremely, uh, it's completely new, but it will change so many things. Then, uh, you know, you can calculate many different things. For example, think about that uh, a problem uh, which uh, the most powerful supercomputers would uh, today would take hundreds of years. Let me say 500 years. Uh, by today's uh, uh, by today's quant uh, supercomputer power would take uh, a quantum computer today a d-wave quantum computer probably if if it can be if, if it was programmed this way to access and r run it on a quantum computer uh, probably seconds uh, seconds maybe less minutes, probably seconds, who knows, yeah? but not 500 years. We will see the result almost immediately. Yeah? Develop your uh, uh, quantum programs right now. Now it's time to start. Okay, so this is not a joke. This is, and I'm telling you, Maurus Palmer, that's my name. I'm telling you, two things at least will change the world as we know it by today. One of them is quantum computing, quantum computers, and the other one made to say is artificial intelligence, so-called AI. Those two things will be extreme. Okay, so I will uh, stop this uh, uh, or end this uh, video for the moment. Thank you that you uh, were listening to me. Thank you so much. And I hope I could show you something you've never seen before. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, like, share, subscribe. Let all the people, all your friends know that there is a channel of Maurice Palmer where you can or and will see things you've probably never seen before. Exciting time, right? So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for your time. And of course, hopefully see you next time. But before I do that, I say peace in and see you in the next video, which is part two of quantum computing. Thank you so much.